If you want to know the truth about AR-15 barrel twist and bullet stability, this video is for you. So let's get started. Welcome to my channel. I'm Andy and this is part two of a video I'm doing regarding AR-15 rifle twist, bullet weight, and bullet stability. Now in part one, I identified three myths that I have seen with regard to rifles with a twist rate of one in nine shooting long 77 grain bullets. So in this part of the video, we are gonna dispel with myth number three, which I have called killing Mrs. Jones's poodle. Again, I encourage you to go back and watch part one of the video so that you know what we're talking about. So how are we gonna dispel myth number three today? Well, we're gonna go out to the Lake Park uh, Shiocton Lake Park, that is, shooting range, and we're going to shoot three rifles that we did in part one out to 567, 565, somewhere in their yards. I don't know why the range is set up that way, but that's the furthest distance that we can shoot there. And we're also going to shoot the same Black Hills 77 grain tip match king bullets that we shot in part one of the video. Now there's two different targets we're going to shoot at which I've already been to the range and shot at. Uh, we are gonna shoot at a 12 inch gong, which would be approximately the size of this is 12 inches. And with one of the rifles, the ACOG rifle that we're gonna start out with, I had to shoot at the big steel plate, which is actually 30 inches by 60 inches approximately. And it had painted some uh, red dots on the plate. Now, I couldn't shoot at the 12-inch plate with the ACOG because it was hanging from a carrier and I was just uh, holding my reticle off here in space and looking at the berm, so I couldn't get my reticle in the same place each time to get accurate shooting on the range because I was dealing with some wind that day. Now, so what I did was I actually shot at the uh, big rectangular uh, plate and I was able to place my reticle kind of like this between these two um, uh, red painted dots on the, uh, on the plate. And you can see from the wind that my shots ended up being over here. So I shot a group of five bullets and then I measured that group and we will go over that group size so that you can see how the ACOG did, the four power ACOG uh, with a 20 inch barrel uh, shooting out to 567 yards. So let's get out to the range and I'll show you how we did with the ACOG. All right, we're back from the range, and as you can see, we shot a good grouping with the ACOG at uh, 566 or 565, whatever it is. Uh, doesn't really matter, that yard's not gonna make a difference. Um, but as you can see, I was, or you couldn't see, I was placing my reticle somewhere in this area, dealing with some right to left wind, and the shots were ended up over here. Now I measured the uh, group size and obviously that first shot on the video is difficult to see because it's right next to the red. I measured the group size at 9.75 inches. So that would translate to approximately 1.72 inches uh, MOA or 1.72 MOA at that distance. Now, if you remember from the first part of the video, we were able to shoot under an inch group at 100 yards. Once you push the ACOG out to uh, that type of distance, you just don't get as accurate a grouping as you would on a rifle that you could uh, dial up with a scope. 
but that was still a very good shooting. Next up, we're going to shoot the Coyote rifle uh, with the um, well with without the SWFA scope. I will tell you that I did notice when I got back from the range after the first trip, shooting at 100 yards where we shot that approximately inch and a half group, the uh, scope mount was actually loose. And because I had to re-zero the rifle, I decided to put on a Night Force 2.5 to 10 power scope. Um, will give me a little bit better clarity at that distance. But I did shoot that rifle at the 12-inch gong out at um, Shiocton. So we'll see how the uh, Coyote performed at that distance. So let's get back to the range and take a look. We are once again back from the range after shooting the Coyote rifle and as you can see from the video I was able to put four out of five shots onto a 12 inch plate at 566 yards with that rifle. If you remember that was the uh, worst rifle uh, that we shot at the 100 yard range with a group uh, just under uh, one and a half inches. Now the 12 inch plate at that distance in Shiocton would be just a little bit over a two MOA group. Um, I either pulled one of the shots or um, didn't get a good look at it or whatever it was, I don't know. But I'm still happy with that performance in that rifle when you're dealing with wind at that distance. That's still what I would consider fairly good shooting out of that rifle. So let's get uh, back to the range one last time with our 16 inch rifle, which if you remember shot the best at the range at the 100 yard line with a uh, 0.8 something group, almost a little over three quarters of an inch. And let's see how that rifle does at 566 yards. We are back from the range after having shot our 16 inch barreled rifle. And as you can see from the results, I was able to get five out of five hits on the 12 inch plate at 566 yards. I was not surprised by that. Maybe you were. Um, because the 16 inch barrel has obviously four inches less of barrel to stabilize that long 77 grain bullet out at that distance, 566 yards. This rifle also shot its best at 100 yards, grouping between three quarters and one inch uh, group at that distance. So this is a very accurate rifle with um, the long 77 grain bullets. Now, um, you can see from the video also that our Coyote rifle and this rifle was able to hit our 12 inch gong nine out of 10 times, which I would consider very good at 566 yards. Um, with at that time, it was about a five mile an hour wind I had for those two rifles. So not a lot of wind, but still able to get accurate and precise hits onto that target. Our ACOGs still did very well, 
by shooting a uh, 1.72 inch group at 566 yards onto the uh, big 30 by 60 inch plate. And so all three rifles were able to stabilize that long 77 grain um, uh, tip match king bullet at that distance. So if you still don't believe me, um, we're gonna hear from Black Hills and Hornaday, and they tell you right on the box that uh, there is important accuracy information. Heavy match bullets require relatively fast rifling twist rates for best accuracy. A 1 in 10 or faster twist is necessary for 68 and 69 grain bullets, which we we're not shooting. The 75 and 77 grain bullets require a twist rate of 1 in 9 inches, 1 in 8 inches, or 1 in 7 inches. And then Hornaday tells us in not so long terms that their 223 Remington 75 grain boat tail hollow point is for one in nine twists or faster. So both those manufacturers know that uh, a one in nine twist barrel will stabilize those bullets. You know that because you've seen me shoot this rifle at 100 yards and got precise groups. And then we took it out to 566 yards to spelling myth number three, which is killing Mrs. Jones's poodle. We didn't do that. We didn't spend $2 million. We we're able to get precise hits on those targets. So be sure to check out my video on dispelling the myth that AR-15 rifle accuracy is dependent on a free float handguard. God bless and guide America. Have a good one and thanks for watching.